Hi everyone, this is Justine Shine, formerly known as Justine Call. Um, I'm a double gold consultant with Evolution. I am on Platinum Organization Team Sky and I am the team leader of Team Eclipse. So welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me. We're gonna be talking about uh, Cayuga Lake today, uh, just my personal experience so that you can help your clients when they wanna visit the Finger Lakes. Each of the Finger Lakes, you know, they have similar things to offer because, you know, they're a lake, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, you have the boating, you have the lake houses, those kinds of things. But each Finger Lake also has specific activities and towns that you can visit. So I've lived in Ithaca, New York uh, for about six years now. I also went to Ithaca College for five years. So I have a collective experience of 11 years being in this area. Ithaca is located at the very southern part of Cayuga Lake. So a lot of this presentation is going to be based on the southern, mid to southern part of Cayuga Lake, but I do touch a little bit on the upper northern part of the lake as well. All right. So as I said, this presentation is going to focus on Cayuga Lake from the perspective of living or staying in or near Ithaca, New York, right? And we're going to cover the following topics, some local festivals, food options, hotel recommendations, sightseeing and activities, along with the Cayuga Lake wine trail, which was, that's what makes Cayuga Lake super popular. All right, so a little bit about Cayuga Lake. I've provided a URL for you guys to be able to see a lot more info than what I'm giving in this presentation. So when I post this um, in the team chats, the YouTube video will have this whole presentation also um, attached to the video. One second. Okay, so Cayuga Lake is the longest of the Finger Lakes. It crosses three counties, Seneca, Cayuga, and Tompkins County. Ithaca, New York, where I live, happens to be in Tompkins County. And the lake stretches for nearly 40 miles from historic Seneca Falls to beautiful Ithaca, New York. All right, uh, the most popular things people do when they come to Cayuga Lake are wine tours, fishing, swimming, boating, hiking the gorges and waterfalls, which are absolutely beautiful and of a plenty in Ithaca, as well as attending local festivals. Uh, the best time of year to visit is in mid-fall for the beautifully colored foliage or at peak bloom season in the spring. Both times are booming with activities and festivals. I do not recommend that you send people here during the winter. And there's a few reasons for that. I'll go over that here. Um, first of all, there's a lot of country back roads, right? Um, there is a route off of the highway called Route 89, which goes all the way down Cayuga Lake uh, to Ithaca, New York. However, there's no lights or anything, right? So if your client's traveling in the middle of the night during winter, there's ice issues, snow issues, all kinds of stuff. Um, in addition, you know, there's a lot of deer where we are um, and, you know, a bunch of things. <laughs> Ithaca itself um, is very hilly, so driving up those hills and stuff during the winter too, they do try to take care of the roads well, but ice is always a problem around here, which is my main reason for saying what I've said. Um, but let's move on. So first I'll start with the Cayuga Lake Wine Trail, because as I said before, this wine trail is what brings a lot of tourists to Cayuga Lake on top of the fact that you can bring your boat, right? So the Cayuga Lake Wine Trail is known as America's first wine trail and has developed into a tourist destination of the Finger Lakes. The trail now contains not just wineries, it's developed to having distilleries. They have one newer brewery right now called Liquid State. And there's also, I believe it's two or three different cider houses all along that trail. Uh, each year, the trail hosts a themed festival where you receive wine tastings and a gift from each winery. You have to purchase tickets for that, of course, and it's best to do it in advance because of how popular it is. Okay. And for clients who do not want a city vibe like Ithaca, which I'll present later, um, you know, Cayuga Lake in general has a lot of really great lake homes along with, they, um, they also have some camping and cabin sites as well, and I'll go over that. But 
some examples of the themed festivals that this wine trail does. Um, they've done wine and herb, where at each winery, you got to bring home an herb to plant in your garden. They even were giving away peppers and tomato seeds. Um, not seeds, sorry, they were starter plants. They also had a uh, succulent festival uh, where you got a little mini succulent per winery. Uh, they also had um, a flower themed one. So you got flower seeds to plant. Um, so things like that, and it makes it really fun. This year they're doing, uh, I think it's either late November or early December, they're doing a holiday shopping type uh, wine trail this year. So yeah, just really fun things. Um, let's see. So then we have along Cayuga Lake, the state park, right? They have plenty of campsites and cabins to rent. You know, there's a picture over here for you. Uh, they have a place to launch your boat. You have ability to ice fish and hunt. They have snowshoeing and cross country skiing. They have a swimming beach, um, if you can see over here on the right. Uh, and they also have pavilion and shelter rentals. So, you know, family reunions and stuff, it's a great place if they're okay with, you know, the cabin style. However, the location of Cayuga Lake State Park is fairly close to Ithaca. Um, so you could, you know, have a family rent pavilions there at the park and still stay in Ithaca or near Ithaca. Okay. Some sites to visit in the Cayuga Lake area. So like I said, Cayuga Lake is not just Ithaca, New York, right? It's across three different counties. So these are some cool historical sites to visit uh, when someone's in the area, right? So we have the Harriet Tubman Historical Site located in Auburn. That's in the northern part. Actually, all of these are in the northern part. <clears throat> uh, with the Women's Rights National Historic Park, we have the Cayuga Museum of History and Art. And then we have the Montezuma National Wildlife Refuge. Excuse me, one second. <clears throat> um, and then it's not on Cayuga Lake, but within an hour of the southern tip of the lake is the Corning Museum of Glass. How many people have been to Corning Museum of Glass? Put it in the chat box. Personally, I've been and oh my gosh it's beautiful nobody oh man maybe i'm just slow to see the answers no highly recommended guys it's a good day trip if you want to stay in the ithaca area it's so fun you can even see some live glass blowing stuff going on right sometimes they have um they host uh, glass making artists from all over the world for a week or two as a residency. It's a really wonderful place to go. All right. So towns to visit surround. Oh, apparently we're not doing that. Sorry. <laughs> um, so festivals in the Cayuga Lake area. There's three specifically um, outside of Ithaca that people go to often. So well, there's a Cayuga Lake, Cayuga Lake Wine Trail, of course, which I mentioned earlier, has a few different themed festivals each year, one or two. Uh, there's the Sterling Renaissance Festival, and there's also the Finger Lakes Musical Theater Festival. Patty says she would love to see the Harriet Tubman House in the Women's Rights Museum. Yes. So the Harriet Tubman um, site, it has like a, a building you go into that has some history monuments and stuff but then there's also um her home in auburn new york that you can tour through which is really really amazing uh, for those of you that don't know um the ithaca region and outside of that so the cayuga lake region was part of the underground railroad so the, there's really rich history a lot of the homes around here are very old as well my house is almost 200 years old and is smacked up on the underground railroad trail which is pretty cool um so yeah all right so now i'd love to talk about ithaca new york okay this is where i've lived it's my favorite thing to talk about <laughs> so ithaca is an eclectic diverse small community of approximately thirty-two thousand during the college season 
So Ithaca is a college town, it's a tourist town, it's a local community town, and regardless of its size, there is a ton to do in the area. It's actually quite shocking. Um, there's three colleges, Cornell University, which is beautiful to walk through, especially during the fall or the spring. There's Ithaca College, and there's also TC3, which is our local community college. So because Ithaca is a booming community of small businesses, you know, they have local festivals, organic farming, arts and music, college life, and more, right? And as I said, it's a college town, right? But there isn't, there's a whole district in the city called College Town <laughs> because um, it's common knowledge around here that when the college kids leave, the population of Ithaca goes down by like one third to two thirds. It's pretty crazy. It's very quiet during the summer. Okay, so some local festivals in Ithaca. These are all wonderful and some of my favorites too. We have the Apple Harvest Festival, which actually just happened. Um, it occurs late September, early October. We have the Winter Lights Festival and the Chowder Cook-Off. It's in mid-December usually. Um, normally the dates for all these festivals will come about like three, four months before they typically have it. Um, the Winter Lights Festival actually used to be an ice festival. So ice sculpting um, artists from all over the state, all over the nation and, and even worldwide would come to Ithaca, New York for an ice festival and they would do carving competitions and stuff. They stopped doing it because of COVID, but I'm sure in the future they will start it again. Uh, we also have the chili cook-off. Uh, it's in February or March. This festival, along with the chowder cook-off, uh, it's involved with all of the local restaurants. They come together and all compete to whoever has the best chowder or the best chili. And uh, then there's Ithaca Pride Week because Ithaca, New York is a safe haven for LGBTQ community members. Right? And this festival normally happens in June or July. And then lastly, we have Ithaca Fest or Ithaca Festival. And it is a festival of arts and culture, really. So they have from all over the Ithaca region in Tompkins County, artists, uh, craftsmen, so on and so forth come together. And it's about a week long festival. So some great things to do in Ithaca. So the list below is just a very small percentage of what the town has to offer. I can only fit so much in a presentation, uh, but I've given you a link here to be able to see some more things to do, especially for your clients, right? Uh, so number one, there are a ton of hiking opportunities. I've hyperlinked here um, all of the different hiking trails I have here. Uh, the newest one is called Black Diamond and it wraps around almost the entire city. Um, and the best trails are located at the waterfalls and gorges around here. And there are quite a few. The most popular ones are Buttermilk Falls, Taganic Falls, uh, Robert Treeman State Park, which has, I believe it's two different trails, and then Cascadillo Falls. Um, second to that, we have the Ithaca Farmer's Market. Uh, this is you know, your typical farmer's markets, all of the local artisans, farmers, uh, craftsmen, you name it. Um, and they come together every weekend, but close down for, you know, the major winter months and then reopen um, early spring. Then there's the Museum of the Earth, which is great for kids. Uh, we have the State Theater of Ithaca, which is awesome for us because as agents, we can book events there through golden tickets. So get registered with them and have your affiliate link ready to go. Um, for the State Theater of Ithaca, although it's in a very small town, they do bring big names to the area. My husband and I are huge comedy fans. And so we've been to big name events like Tom Segura, Mike Birbiglia, right? So those kind of people are people that show up here along with musicians. Um, next, there's a really good shopping district called the Commons, which is in downtown Ithaca, and they have a good array of small shops. They all have locally made items um, like clothes, handmade art, um, and all kinds of great things. 
And then lastly on this list, I have the Cornell Botanical Gardens, which is located within Cornell University. Um, any questions so far? <coughs> uh, feel free to unmute if you do. No? Okay. <laughs> All right, so I also want to talk about cuisine in Ithaca because as I said, um, Ithaca is a very eclectic, diverse community. So we have um, almost every ethnicity you could name has come to Ithaca. Uh, why we've ended up as a community this way, I'm not entirely sure to be honest, but people have immigrated here. Um, so as a result of Ithaca's diversity, there are a large array, array of different cuisines to enjoy, such as Latin American food, Asian, Ethiopian, Moroccan, Indian, French, Italian, and more. Yes, more. <laughs> um, but below, I've given you a list of all my favorite places um, that are pretty highly rated in the area. Uh, so we have the Bickering Twins, which has really great Latin American food. Um, great tacos. They hand press their tortilla, everything, the whole nine yards. And we actually, my husband and I are friends with the people that own this restaurant. Um, they actually lived in Bolivia, learned how to make the cuisine, which is really awesome. So they're considered one of the most authentic Latin American restaurants in Ithaca. And then there's Ithaca Ale House, which is just your standard American cuisine, New Delhi Diamond, Indian food. Uh, right now, because of the pandemic, they're only doing takeout. There's waffle frolic, which is pretty much a waffle with whatever you want on it that they have. <laughs> um, Purity ice cream is our local ice cream place. We have a few more, but Purity is the oldest and most popular. And then there's Sunset Grill, which is a good breakfast, lunch, and dinner location. All right. And most importantly for us as Asians, right, where do we send these people to when they go to Ithaca? So it is important to book your client's hotel ASAP for the Cayuga Lake region in the Ithaca area and at least four months in advance. Why? Because of the college town that we have, right? So we have three different college graduations happening, right? So people book rooms a year in advance for this. It's crazy. On top of that, we have all the different festivals that I mentioned. So putting that all together, if a client comes to you like two weeks before wanting to go to Ithaca, you might find something, but it might not be, you know, exactly like what they want. Like if they want two adjoining rooms or if they want specifically a king bedroom, you might not be able to find them that because of how, um, popular all these hotels are, I guess. So here's a list of what I would consider the highly rated hotels in Ithaca. Um, most of these are located right downtown because most of the good hotels are only in downtown Ithaca. And that's fine because that's where all the activity is happening, all the festivals are happening, so on and so forth. So I'll give you a second to take a look at that list. Uh, what's really cool about number two, the Statler Hotel, is it is run by the students in the hospitality program at Cornell University. Um, it is a little pricey, but they also host weddings. Um, I've actually spoken with the manager at Statler. We can book the Statler on Expedia Tap, but we can talk to them directly about weddings and still be able to get commission for that. That's a cool fact. All of these hotels were able to book, uh, with exception of number five, I believe, um, directly with our vendors with Archer. Okay, so, along with Expedia Tap. Okay. All right, so that is all I have for Ithaca, New York. Um, what I would love to know, you guys are more than welcome to unmute for this is what are some things from this presentation that you find would be helpful um, to tell your clients to help them come to Ithaca or Cayuga Lake? 
what are some features that you find are a good marketing tool, I suppose? Justine, I think, uh, you know, the wine route would be real interesting to a lot of people, um, you know, that all over Europe and all over the United States, you know, there's always people that like to go to the wine tastings. Um, it sounds like a hiker's paradise as well, you know, for people that love to hike. And then you've got all the festivals that you mentioned. So I think there's a lot of really good selling points about the area that, you know, people could enjoy and maybe have a little more kickback, relaxed type vacation as opposed to, I don't, I don't know how big the city is, you know, miles wide, but, you know, in other words, it might be a nice break from like New York <laughs> or some it of the larger is. cities. I, I would call it a suburb of New York City. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, it's very small in comparison to most major cities, obviously. You know, Ithaca, um, the unique thing about Ithaca as well is you have this um, very active city, right? Not nearly as active as... Um, New York City, right? It's a lot. Yes, like Austin said, definitely more laid back than New York City, but it still has, you know, um, a lot to do and whatnot. But as soon as you come out of Ithaca, it's the funniest thing. And people always say this when they come here, you come out of Ithaca and it's just the boonies, <laughs> right? And it's true to a certain extent, right? It's very less developed. Um, it's a lot of farmland because again, like I said, Ithaca is organic. They really love all natural things. Uh, the farmer's market is a huge part, huge, huge part of the community. Um, so, you know, that kind of tells you what the outside community is like as well. Austin says a diamond in the rough. That is true. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So let's see what everyone else has said. So Brene says, the wine tours and the cabin rentals. Yes, absolutely. Um, let's see. Patty says the history regarding the Underground Railroad sounds fascinating. It really is. Yes. It's, a, it's such, it's such a, like I said, a very diverse community. It's pretty amazing that somewhere so small can have so much to offer. You know, um, any other questions or comments, guys? Uh, Patty asked, which would be the best airport to find? Oh, yes, that's a great question, Patty. So um, Ithaca does have its own airport. Uh, the next closest one is either Binghamton Airport or Syracuse Airport. Syracuse Airport is about uh, 50 minutes to an hour away from Ithaca. Binghamton is about an hour or hour and a half, depending on traffic. Um, but you can fly right into Ithaca. It's a little pricier of an airport, um, but if someone doesn't want to drive the hour from the other two, then Ithaca is perfect. You're welcome. And Ithaca actually only used to be a regional airport. They're now an international airport. Um, anything else? If not, you guys are more than welcome to head out and continue on with the things. Thank you, Austin. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned, guys, this was recorded, right? So um, I'll send this out to all of our team. If you're not on Team Sky, uh, your leaders will receive that and send it out accordingly. Um, when you watch this YouTube video, look at the uh, description because I'll have this presentation attached there for you to keep. All right. You're welcome, Patty. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Bye, guys. <clears throat> I'll hang out uh, just for a minute in case anyone else has any last minute questions or comments. You're welcome.